What is going on everyone? Pick6 back giving you another commentary. This one is, uh, this one I'm going to title How to Snipe. This, more importantly, I made this commentary basically applying to Battlefield 3. However, you can take some points of this and apply them to Call of Duty. I know it's very strange applying Call of Duty and Battlefield in the same sentence. Some people would even hate that. Point being, logic applies. So, Sniping is, you know, some of it will overlap with the other game. So, but primarily this is based for Battlefield. First and foremost, number one cardinal rule of sniping is to spot everything you see. Infantry, tanks, jets, choppers, fucking UAVs, everything. Spot everything. If you're a squad leader, spot a flag to attack. You get a free 20 points every time so much as anyone goes near a flag. If you aren't, even if you aren't the best sniper in the world and you're trying to get better, you can at least help the team by spotting everything you see. That's huge. Now, another tip I like to use personally is always use the 12 times magnification scope for the bigger maps and you can use the 8 for less lengthy encounters. However, it's preference. If you prefer the 8 in the bigger one, you can still go with the 8, and obviously you can use the 12. My preference is 12. I almost always use 12, despite the map I'm in. Never scope in for lengthy times. Always scope out the track movement. You track your movement to find your opponent, and scoping in, redu scop scoping in reduces the amount of things you can see, and also gives off a glint to other snipers watching, or even people that like to flank, like me. They let them know where you are. Always only scope in to see a potential sniper spot or investigate something that could be another sniper or target that you couldn't see not scoped in. Another rule, pistol is your best friend. When you get a hit marker or you're in a close range encounter, always switch to your pistol or even when you're reloading, Call of Duty says it all the time. Uh, switch quick to your other weapon, it's faster than reloading applies here. Always switch to your pistol to defend your kill and then after you're done, always reload both guns before you can get to your next encounter. A lot of this seems easy, I know, but it's important to stress it. We'll get into the more difficult stuff as we go. With motion sensors, try even with your motion sensors, try to avoid staying in one area for a long time. Especially after getting a few kills because I'm certain the other team or the other snipers will certainly be going for revenge kills. If you're going to move from one point to another, look ahead and plan your route. Move from cover to cover and try not to be detected. Because if you do and, you're, and if you're in a medium range against people with assault rifles or a support class, you basically don't stand a chance. So always move from cover to cover. I prefer to use, when I'm engaged with another sniper, firing and we're in a sniper duel, I prefer to use a side strafing motion in the duel. After I get a hit marker or a miss, I quickly move to a side, either left or right, doesn't matter, and I'll strafe back to the original location and scope back in and shoot. What this does is if he fires, he's going to shoot where you were so he'll miss. Or, if he doesn't fire because he can't get a read on you, you get to fire a second shot before he even fires one. It's just straight logic. When you're moving, center your reticle toward the middle of the screen and as close to the target as possible if you sight one. This allows for a quick look down the scope and little adjustment to hit your target. This is where the Call of Duty overlap applies because most people call this a setup for quick scoping. Same general strategy for any any shooter at all that uses sniper rifles, though. Always get as close to the target as you possibly can before you scope in so you don't have... It reduces the time it takes to find and locate and lock onto your target. In Battlefield, I do this in any game, but in Battlefield especially, always aim for the headshots because they're a one-hit kill. If you hit in the neck or chest, your magnifier is a little higher, but it's still not going to be a one-hit kill. Otherwise, if you don't hit the head, you're always going to have a minimum of two shots to get a guy to kill him. In Battlefield, again, not applying to Call of Duty, you have to compensate for gravity and lead your shots. 
compensate for gravity by aiming slightly above the target on medium range shots and relatively higher, maybe an inch or so above the center reticle in the scope for longer range shots. Judge the distance, the reticle should go above the target. It gets far easier to judge distances with practice, that's all it takes, practice makes perfect. To compensate for a moving target, however, is more difficult. It depends on the speed and height of the target. If the target's moving fast, you have to aim a fair distance ahead and fire well ahead of the target. And the general rule should be to aim where he you guess that he will be. That's my general rule. If he's moving, I'll aim to where I think he will be and I'll fire. If the target's far away and moving and you feel you can hit him, well... <laughs> Chances are you don't really need to watch this tutorial because you know that already. For those that like to, would like to know, know how I do it, or can't and are trying to learn, aim ahead just like before, but also aim high. It's a combo of the both things I just talked about and is probably the hardest thing to do sniping in Battlefield, for me anyway. Because if he's far away and moving, you have to aim high and ahead of him. This is open to debate, this particular point I'm about to make, but I would like to recommend not going prone unless you're extremely far away and no one else is around to see you. I prefer to stand and take cover or strafe instead of going prone because prone leaves your head directly open and is the easy target. It's basically the only thing a person can hit, which for a person like me that aims for the head anyway, makes my job a lot easier. There are benefits to going prone, because you can, say, use the bipod and reduce recoil, but I just, I don't, I prefer to stand, and, and plus, standing gives you an easy getaway if you can't sense where you're being shot at from. Versus when you're prone, he gets at least a couple more shots at you before you can even move. So that's that's the pluses to standing and being able to move around first. That's, that's my general opinion. Last concluding point I'd like to make is accuracy and timing comes with experience. The more you try it, the better you'll get and the easier it becomes. It only gets better with practice. Anyway, I hope you learned some tips from this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having a look. If you learned anything, give it a like. If you aren't subscribed and you'd like to see more, please help me out and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Thanks.